Big news of the OpenAI Developer Conference. They released a new version of GPT-4 API called Turbo. It has some major enhancements over the existing version, including addressing the biggest issue developers have with GPT-4 API. The rent is too damn high. But an important question is how does this new cheaper version compare on quality to the existing one? And I'll show you a direct comparison later in the video. So let's first look at the details of what we get with this new API. And the first thing I'll notice is the context window has gotten way bigger, four times bigger than the previous high. And what the context window is, is the amount of text measured in tokens that a large language model can process at one time. And 128,000 tokens is about 300 pages. And this is gonna be really powerful. One thing I can think of right off the bat is now you could actually send an entire application to GPT-4 and have it analyze it fix bugs, add new features. They've also slashed the cost of this API. As you can see here, they've slashed the input cost. It's just one third of what it was under the standard GPT-4. And they've cut the output cost in half. So putting that together, it says it's gonna be two to three times cheaper than the previous GPT-4 pricing. So that sounds great, but let's see if it actually works that way. And also let's see if the quality changes at all. So to try this out, I'm gonna use GPT Engineer. I actually did a whole video on it, so I'll link to that in the end if you're interested. And the application we got Engineer GPT to build was something that takes a text document, removes personal information like names and birth dates, and then converts it to PDF. So really all we have to do to get this working with the new GPT-4 Turbo is to change the model. So we're gonna change it here to GPT-4 1106 Preview. So we'll keep our input prompt the same and we'll just run this thing. And there we go, it's running again. It seems to be a bit faster now with the Turbo. So the speed part of it does check out. And this part of the process is actually building a specification and breaking the problem down to steps. And this part seems to work as before. And now it's actually coding the application. So this will be the interesting part. So let's have a look at the new code versus the old code. And this is the part I got a bit disappointed in. So if we see the PII detector.py created, it actually put a comment right in there and said, this is a simplified example. In a real world scenario, you would use more sophisticated methods, which I never saw the standard GPT-4 give a comment like that in the code. And then you see here, it gives it one pattern to recognize a name, which I guess is a good start, but now we have to figure out how to make patterns for addresses, phone numbers, et cetera. That's really what we're using AI to do. So this code quality is super disappointing. If we look back at the one that the standard GPT-4 created, it has one for names, addresses, phone numbers, numbers, emails, social security numbers, birth dates, and even puts comments on each of them. This is kind of what I was expecting and hoping for out of the GPT-4 Turbo. And then on top of that, the GPT-4 Turbo version gave different libraries and it didn't even work. The application didn't work versus the standard GPT-4 one, which worked first try. So to sum up the direct comparison, the cost to generate an app with the Turbo version was seven cents. So it was really cheap versus 23 cents with the standard one. And I could tell it was noticeably faster generating the code. But as you saw, the quality just isn't there yet. So it's not really useful for me to generate code as of right now. But remember, this is just the preview. The real stable version is coming out in a few weeks, and I'm sure there'll be future enhancements and iterations to make it even better. This has a lot of potential with a huge context window and cheap cost, and it'll eventually be amazing in agentic frameworks like Autogen, where you really pass a lot of data into the context when the different agents talk to each other. This is gonna be really powerful. But let me know in the comments, are you experiencing the same thing? Another thing to mention, I did some testing on different kind of use cases. So if you're just evaluating text and doing a summary of a news article, for example, the Turbo version seems comparable to the standard GPT-4 API. So maybe it's just degraded in terms of code quality. Thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.